All right, this is lesson 2.4 of our pre-calc 11 class. Unit 2 is called polynomials. Lesson 4 is called factor by grouping. What we're going to learn about in this lesson is how to factor by grouping and how to identify which factoring strategies to use. So factoring by grouping is kind of a niche thing, like it's a very special case. It's not going to be our go-to way of factoring, um, but I want you to see it. So if we have four terms, each with a different degree, or different polynomial, or sorry, different exponent on x, then what we're going to do is we're going to think about them in, in pairs. So the two pairs with the biggest x exponents, what's the greatest common factor in these two? Well, I can pull an x squared out of each of these, leaving 2x plus 3. The second pair, we can pull a negative 13 out of, leaving 2x plus 3. Notice 2x plus 3 um, if we think of this as two factors minus two factors, they both have a factor of 2x plus 3. We can do greatest common factor. So the greatest common factor between those two terms is 2x plus 3. We'll pull that out, leaving the x squared minus 13 behind. 2x plus 3 comes out front, just like greatest common factor. So that twice now. Um, leaving us with this setup right here. So this process is called uh, uh, factor by grouping. We group the first two terms, we group the second two terms. This is what I mean when I say greatest common factor. ax plus bx both have a factor of x, factor out the x. But instead of factoring out x, we're factoring out 2x plus 3. The 2x plus 3 here is the x here. x squared is the a, uh, minus 13 is the plus b. So a plus b is the x squared minus 13, and the x again is 2x plus 3. Okay, second one, same thing. Uh, first two terms have a, pair, have a greatest common factor of x squared. The second two terms have a greatest common factor of 16. If you factor those GCFs out, we get x, 4x minus 5 for each of them. We can pull out 4x minus 5, leaving the x squared plus 16 behind. And we did factor by grouping. Okay, um, I do notice this is a difference of squares in example A, but if we square root that, we'll get an irrational square root of 13. So we're not going to do that, we're not going to go there. Okay, so then. Um, yeah, again, this is a special case. You need four terms to do factor by grouping. So if you see four terms, either I'm playing a trick on you by adding uh, two like terms in there, or you're going to have to use factor by grouping. So watch out for that. OK, here's another example of factor by grouping, although when we do so, we get a difference of squares that we can break down. So we're going to do a factor by grouping, and then we're going to do a difference of squares. Here's our final answer right here. This one right here, the way it's written, doesn't look like difference of squares. But when I find a greatest common factor of, well actually, let me take a step back. Um, the question says factor completely using um, identifying which factoring strategies that we use. We know four factoring strategies. Greatest common factor, and that should be our first go-to every time. And then we know box method, uh, factor by grouping, and difference of squares. In this particular problem, um, I like that leading term to be positive, so I'm going to factor a negative one out. So greatest common factor first in red. Once I do that, I notice that we have a difference of squares here. So the second thing we're going to do is difference of squares, that in green. And then the third thing we're going to do is um, the y squared minus 9 is also a difference of squares. So we're going to break that term down to two factors as well. So here's our final answer right here. Um, I think as Elliot pointed out in class, another way you could do it is flip these terms around. Instead of negative y to the power of 4 plus 81, we could write it as 81 minus y to the power of 4. This looks like difference of squares. If you did it this way, you could rewrite it, and then just do difference of squares, and then do difference of squares again. And you get a similar answer. 
this answer is similar to the answer that we got from before. Um, the only difference is we have 3 minus y, and we have a, down here, and we have a negative 1 up here. Well, if I multiply the negative 1 times the y minus 3, it would be negative y plus 3, which is the same thing as 3 minus y. So these two answers are equivalent. On a quiz, I would take either one. Okay, so this one, first thing we'll do, greatest common factor of x. Second thing, we have a three term, we're going to use box method to factor this thing. And then here's our final answer, our final factor expression. This one we have four terms, and they all have different exponents. So four terms I'm already thinking at some point I'm going to do difference of squares. But not first. First thing, greatest common factor, each term has at least three x's in it. So pull out x to the power of three. We're left with this guy right here. Just this expression in the brackets we're going to do difference of squares on. The first two terms have a common factor of x squared. The second two terms have a common factor of negative 1. And the reason why I want to do negative 1 instead of positive 1 is because that makes the remaining piece in each of those x minus 6. Factor out the x minus 6, we're left with x squared minus 1. And then carry that x to the power of 3 down. And notice x squared minus 1 is a difference of squares, so our final factoring method we're going to use for this is break down the difference of squares. Here's our final answer. Alright, we now know about factor by grouping. Hopefully we're building our confidence working with polynomials and factoring them. And you now know all the methods of factoring, and hopefully after this Delta Math assignment, you'll have some practice uh, identifying different factoring strategies um, in order to fully factor a polynomial of any kind. So the Padawan is now the master. Good luck with your homework.